What's going on, guys? It's your boy, John the Liquidator, coming back with another video. So it look like the WNBA definitely is not playing fair when it comes to Kayla Clark. They just disrespected her in the MVP ranking, and the commissioner just went on record and shocked the world with what she just said about Kayla Clark. Guys, for this one here, we got to go all the way up to Indy. Let's get it. Let's go. <laughs> now bro for Kayla Clark not to be in the top five of the MVP race is simply beyond me bro and yes you heard me correctly she is not even in the top five because the WNBA just released a power rankings for the MVP I'm telling you right now she ain't in the top five let's pull it up right now dog so as you guys can see here the 2024 MVP ladder currently has Asia Wilson listed at number one. This is what they said briefly about Asia Wilson. Last season, Wilson had the best season of her career, set a career high as a score, rebounder, and a shot blocker while continuing to refine her game for the 2023 and most efficient season of her career. Now they got an official Collier at number two in the MVP race, bruh. Now this is crazy. It went on to say this Collier and the Lynx have put together a dominant start after the break, including two convincing wins over the Aces with her standout play. The arguments for Collier as the league MVP are gaining steam. At number three, Sabrina Unescu. Now, you would think Caitlin Clark will be somewhere in the first three of this, but as you guys can see, they got Sabrina Unescu at number three. At number four, they got another. Then Brianna Stewart, bruh. And then at number five, they got another thing, Connecticut Sun player, Alicia Thomas. All of these players is over Caitlin Clark when it comes to the MVP chat for this season. Now, that is crazy in itself because in Caitlin Clark last few games, she's been averaging well over 25 points a game, bro. Somewhere up in there. And that is crazy, dog. Now, with all that being said, the WNBA commissioner pulled up on a podcast – the footage to raises some sensitivities of rivalries between players in the case of uh, angel reese who's just had to shut it down because of a wrist injury caitlin clark who's continuing to play rivalry that goes back to their college days presumably uh where i guess some trash talking entered in but now it seems on some social media channels to have taken a darker turn, a more menacing turn where race has been introduced into yes. the conversation, where sexuality is sometimes in introduced into the conversation. How do you try and stay ahead of that, uh, try and tamp it down or, or act as a league when two of your most visible players are involved, not personally, it would seem, but their fan bases are involved in saying some very uncharitable things well, about the other. Well, the one other. thing that's great about the league right now, we do sit at this intersection of, of culture and sport and fashion and music. Like the WNBA players are really looked at now as kind of cultural icons. True. And when you have that, you have a lot of attention on you. There's no more apathy. Everybody cares. It is a little that bird magic moment, if you recall, from 1979 when those two rookies came in from a big college rivalry, one white, one black. And so we have that moment with these two. But the one thing I know about sports, you need rivalry. That's what makes people watch. They want to watch games of consequence between rivals. They don't want everybody being nice to one another. So the social media is different today than it was in 1979 when it didn't exist. Um, but, you know, I always tell the players, you know, I was told a long time ago, if someone's typing something in and you wouldn't ask their advice, ignore it. So it's um, it's a balance, Quick. but certainly from a marketing dollars, but corporate partners are stepping up to endorse these players. Uh, much, much more so than they were five years ago. 
Now, that was the commissioner, bro. Now, this is what I'm going to say about this. She's basically okaying these veterans to disrespect Caitlin Clark. She said out of her own mouth, everybody ain't going to be so nice to one another. She letting it be known. She's condoning these veterans to attack Caitlin Clark. She's condoning the WNBA legends to talk crap about Kayla Clark, like Cheryl Suits and many others. That's basically what she's saying. She's saying that the drama is good for business. The drama is good for dollar signs. That's what she's saying as the commissioner. She is okaying these ladies to disrespect Kayla Clark. She is okaying for like we just said for the MVP race. For the league to disrespect Caitlin Clark. Because you want to know why? It causes controversy. Controversy sales. Drama sales. She is all for the bad press. The turn down when it comes to Caitlin Clark. And this is crazy. For her to be the commissioner. And her to sit up there and say. Well it's okay for everybody not to like each other. That is beyond me, Story, bro. Rebecca Lobo joined ESPN to talk about Kayla Clark and the Indiana Fever playoff journey if they have to play Connecticut in round one. Check out what she had to say. Roll the foot. Since the break, the second best over that entire span. They've clinched a playoff spot for the first time since 2016. But the next four games will decide the seeding. If the season ended today, though, they'd be facing Connecticut in the first round. Now, Rebecca, the second half of the season, the Fever have been like the most fun story. But when we hit the postseason, are they really going to make some noise? This is a team, Cheney, that I think certainly can. I think they can, obviously, they're not only in the postseason. I think they can win a first-round matchup depending on who they play. Right now, they're seeded to play the Connecticut Sun. And this is a team, and the last time that these two teams matched up, Indiana did, did win that game. But the big concern for Indiana, of course, and you heard – Caitlin Clark and Aaliyah Boston joking about it on the podium is they don't have any playoff experience today. Their starting lineup has a combined zero games of playoff experience. Their entire roster has only nine games of playoff experience. So that's the question is when they get into those moments, uh, you know, how will they handle going against some of those upper teams that have been there combined 200 times? I mean, look, you talked about a big two, right? The, the, the superstar duo. They have a big three with Kelsey Mitchell. Oh, absolutely. Okay, and, I, and you like stats? I do. Stat I love Mamba. That. Who are the only trios in WNBA history to have 20-point games in consecutive games? Is it – it's got to be Minnesota Lynx trio? No, no. Asia Wilson, Chelsea Gray, and Kelsey Plum. Asia Las Wilson, Vegas. Kelsey right. Plum, Jackie Young, and Caitlin Clark. Oh. Aaliyah Boston and oh, Kelsey we're Mitchell. We're going to go to the Lynx. Yeah. Nice. I mean, look, like, they have a big three now, and I think Kelsey Mitchell has really opened things up, too. And, I, and th that floor spacing, the, the pop she brings, the steal that she had the, the, where she pulls up. The, I mean, we didn't show that highlight because we don't we'll, – like, to me, that was – a game-changing play in this where they come all the way back in the second half. And I think when they – it's not just the two-man game. It's not just the two-woman game. It, it, Kelsey Mitchell gives them that third option there that spaces the floor in a way that both those players, both Caitlin Clark and Aaliyah Boston, really need. Ramona, Rebecca, do you know one of my favorite things ha uh, that happens when I'm watching a WNBA game? What's that? I'll pick up my phone, pick up my What's phone, that? and I'll get a text from Kendrick Perkins. Uh -huh. He's like, man, these ladies are balling. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So, Perk, what do you want to see from Caitlin Clark in the playoffs? Well, I just want to see, continue to see her growth for us being the leader, right? We know that she can hoop. We know that she can score the ball. We know that she can make others around her better, right? right? But her leadership. And look, I get it. I'm not comparing college to the WNBA, but when you talk about Caitlin Clark and a little ball, Austin, they've been winners all their life, right? They've been playing in hostile, rowdy environments all their life. They they just young with old souls in the WNBA, baby, like my grandma used to say. But again, it's about her <laughs> leadership, and you can see everybody starting to follow her, right? She's starting to lead in great fashion, and she's just not a vocal leader. She's a leader that's leading by example by putting in the hard work day to day, coming out there competing and leaving it all out on the floor. That's all you can ask in a young rookie. Yeah, there are a lot of comparisons with like the youngest players in yeah. the WNBA with Caitlin Clark, Angel Reese, but then also the older players, Diana Taurasi and company.
That was Rebecca Lobo and the team over at ESPN weighing in on Kayla Clark and the Fever with their playoff journey. Now, guys, just like I stated before, it's going to be interesting to see if they could play four four quarters of basketball going into these playoffs. We need to see four four quarters of basketball. They need not eat no pie pies in the locker room at halftime before they come out because the last couple games, that third quarter looked bad, bro. Like they've been eating pie pies, Big Macs. They coming out flat. I don't know what the hell Christy side feeding them in that damn locker room, but they need lead that alone, bro. Coming in to the next course of these games. But guys, get down in the comments section. Let me know your thoughts about this. Keep them bells on because you want to know why? Because I'm going to bring you the news. And until next time, dog, shake the haters off. I'm out of here. Peace out.